In this video, we're going to show you how to design a crosstab. Whether you're modifying an existing crosstab or creating a new one, the process is essentially the same. So let's create a new crosstab. We'll begin by clicking on the new item on the crosstab page. We now see the crosstab designer on the left and a preview on the right. Once I select my columns and rows, a preview of the crosstab will appear on the right. The designer is organized into tabs that cover all of the properties of a crosstab. We begin on the design tab, where we'll decide which variables will be included in our crosstab and what data will be displayed for each variable. You'll see that there are two areas in the designer. On the left, we have the list of all the variables in this data set, all grouped by category. On the right, we have a tabbed window for columns, rows, filters, the index, and the weight variable. The basic idea is to select one or more variables on the left and drag them to the appropriate location on the right. The variable list will be grouped by categories if they've been specified for this data set. If I expand a category, I can see the variables in that category. As I view these variables, I can see that the variable name is being displayed in this list. I can view the variable codes, or both the codes and the names instead by selecting the appropriate choice on this dropdown. I can also choose how to sort the variables in this list. This is particularly useful when viewing all variables or when you have a large number of variables. By default, the list is sorted in the order the questions appear in the survey or the data set. I could also sort this list in alphabetical order by choosing this option. I can also search for variables if I don't happen to know which category they're in or their exact name. For example, I'd like to find all the variables with the word supernova in the name. I enter that search term in the search box and market site will display all the variables from any category containing the word supernova. I can clear these search results and return to viewing all variables by clicking on the X. Let's continue with our crosstab design by choosing our column variables. To do that, I simply click on the variable name and drag and drop that variable into the columns window. I can select one variable at a time or select multiple variables by using the control or shift keys. For this crosstab, let's include gender and age as our column variables. Once the variables are in the right-hand window, I can reorder them by dragging and dropping or by using these arrows. These two variables, arranged in this way, will produce a crosstab with two sets of columns, or two tables, as indicated here with the labels Table 1 and Table 2. I can also nest one variable within the other by dragging it on top of the other variable. By nesting these variables, my crosstab will have one set of columns, with each gender value subdivided into different age values. To unnest the variables, just drag age below gender. Now let's take a look at the different values for these two variables to see if there are any we'd like to exclude from this crosstab. I can expand each variable individually or click here to expand all of them at once. For this crosstab, I'll uncheck decline to answer in the age variable. Now let's take a look at our column headers to make a few changes. We'll click on the options link to make those changes. Let's shorten the words male and female to M and F. Let's also shorten one of our values for age so it takes up less space in the crosstab. We'll change 65 and over to 65 plus. I think that's it for setting up our columns. Now let's move on to rows. To select our rows, let's expand the general usage category on the variables list. Let's add monthly cell phone bill and purpose of usage to the rows tab. Let's also expand the service satisfaction category and add some additional variables related to customer service. As we look at the preview of this crosstab on the right, we can see the calculations that are automatically displayed for each row variable. We can modify the calculation shown by clicking on this icon and choosing calculation. For example, I could choose to show the median and the max and min for the phone bill. 
I could also elect to show the count and the row percent for the purpose of usage question. The good customer service questions are rating scale questions, as we can see by expanding the values. For this question, let's create a top two and bottom two values, and then calculate the net promoter score. We do that on the nets window, also accessible from this dropdown. To define my nets, all I need to do is check this box for the top two and this box for the bottom two. The default for nets is two values, so I don't need to change that. And the labels are defined automatically, though they can be edited. These new values will be placed below the existing values in the crosstab. To calculate the net promoter score, I simply check this box and MarketSite will do the calculation, which is top box minus bottom box. Now I'd like to set up all of my rating scale questions like this. MarketSite lists the variables that these settings could apply to here. So all I do is just select them and then click this arrow to move them into the right hand pane and then click OK to apply those net settings to those variables. That's really all it takes to set up your rows. In fact, with the exception of nets, if you've set your defaults in MarketSite options, then you may not need to view or change these options for most cross tabs. Let's move on to the filters tab where we'll set up a filter to limit the data, in this case, the number of survey responses that are included in this crosstab. I have two options for filters. I can either create one on the fly, just for this crosstab, by choosing one or more variables from the list and selecting certain values, or I can use a saved filter that was created earlier in the variables section of MarketSite. These saved filters are stored in a special category called filters in the variable list. To use a filter that was previously created and saved as a special filter variable, I'll click on the filters category in the variable list. Let's add the filter, business travelers making at least $50,000 a year. If the filter contains several different variables and you're likely to use it more than once, it's a good idea to create it in the variables section so it can be used by any crosstab such as we've done here. I can also create a filter on the fly from one or more variables. To do this, I drag and drop the variable or variables into the filters tab and check the values I want to be included. In this example, let's include all the survey responses that came in during the first three quarters of the year. So we'll check the boxes for Q1, Q2, and Q3. That wraps up the filter section. Now let's touch briefly on the index tab and the weighting tab. The index tab is where we can choose one particular column to serve as the index and compare all other columns in the cross tab to that column. The weighting tab is where we specify the weight variable to be used by this cross tab. Weighting is used to adjust the count of respondents to more accurately reflect the true population distribution. We can see that there's already a weight variable called population weight specified for this cross tab. This is because this variable was assigned for the entire data set. We'll leave it just the way it is. Keep in mind that when you create your own cross tabs, you'll be working much faster and typically choosing only your columns and rows. We've covered a lot of detail in this video that you won't need in many cases. So let's save this cross tab and close the editor to take a closer look at it. As you can see, age and gender are the column variables arranged side by side monthly cell phone bill, purpose of usage, and the customer service rating questions are the row variables showing the calculations we selected. Here's where our top two, bottom two, and net promoter score calculations appear for the rating scale questions. You can also see by the pink and blue highlighting in this crosstab that MarketSite automatically ran the appropriate tests of statistical significance. Holding my mouse over these color-coded cells provides more information about the stat test results. This note at the top of the cross tab tells us that the confidence level for stat tests is set to 95%. We'll talk about how to configure those tests in another training video on statistical significance. Also at the top of the cross tab, you can see that the weight variable called population weight is being applied. You'll also see that the filter we applied is indicated here and we can click on the details to learn more. There are two final things I'd like to point out before we wrap things up. The first is export. 
You may want to save this crosstab as an Excel or PDF file. To do that, just click on Export and select the output format you'd like. MarketSite will export this crosstab and you can download the file in a few seconds from the task list here. Finally, if you'd like to create a visual representation of this crosstab, click on a charting icon to create a chart of the corresponding area of the crosstab. Just select the chart type from the menu and MarketSite will create the chart. See the training videos on working with charts for additional information on editing and exporting charts to PowerPoint, as well as working with templates and automatically syncing PowerPoint files with MarketSite. That concludes our training video on the basics of creating a crosstab. In separate videos, we'll cover display, statistics, and sharing crosstabs.